This episode is brought to you by SRB Field Rests. Your shotgun, bow, or rifle is an extension of who you are as a hunter. Whether you're hunting snows in a muddy mess of a field, mallards in the marsh, or whitetail from a ground blind, SRB Field Rests has your back. A local Kansas company that provides an easy to use, simple, and ergonomically effective solution to just awkwardly holding onto your gun or your bow when you do not need to. Allowing you to have more freedom, comfort, and safety in the field. Enter discount code FOULFRONT at checkout for 10% off your order of any SRB field rest today. This episode is also brought to you by Oak Barn Beef, a direct-to-consumer, family-owned farm that delivers high-quality, DNA-tested, dry-aged Nebraska beef from their family to yours. You can select from a wide variety of boxes. My personal favorite is the Husker Beef Package, which combines jerky, ground beef, steaks, and a brisket. These packages are perfect for families, get-togethers, out-of-town hunts, or for you outfitters looking to upgrade your table fare for your clients. Order yours today at oakbarnbeef.com. And what's really important is that we band together, we speak with one voice. You know, I'm like, you sure? Because I've got two kids, I don't want it to ruin your hunt. You're like, yeah, yeah, just come and help me. Just take your time. Like I said, it would have killed a normal man, but I'm not normal, but, you know. When you said, why do you want to talk about that? To me, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, there's so many different factors that go into this decision. Enjoy it for what it is. Every moment of it. If, if, if you're only going to shoot one duck. Welcome to the Foul Front Podcast, part of the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. Hey, Foul Front, it's Hannah from Oak Barn Beef. We're giving away a box of steaks, jerky, and more premium beef exclusively for the listeners of the Foul Front. To sign up, head over to foulfront.com and click on the Oak Barn Beef Giveaway tab to enter into this giveaway. Thanks, and we can't wait for you to try our Nebraska-raised and dry-aged premium beef. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, welcome back to the Foul Front. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. In fact, it's the only guest on the Foul Front, uh, past, present, or future, that I've ever slept with. It's my wife, oh my Natalia. How are you? That was stupid. That was stupid? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, should I cut that out? Maybe. Okay. Okay, Natalia, you did something pretty cool this weekend. Mm-hmm. At least I think it was pretty cool. Um, you went on your first waterfowl hunt. Yes, I did. Well, okay, you've joined. I've joined once. Yes. But this last weekend was my first official hunt. Yeah. Um, before we get too far into it, what's the, you know, is it different the night before? Um, whether you know that you're going to actually participate in a hunt or you're just going to come and watch, was it different for you? Well, I guess the one time I joined you in El Paso is now so long ago. I guess I'm not, I, d- I don't think I did much preparing for either, <laughs> either trip. Uh, I know this last weekend there was a lot more um, practice drills with you in the boat and with the shotgun. Yeah, we'll get into that. Okay. Okay. Uh, but not so much, I guess, the night before. No? No. I mean, I feel like in El Paso we probably were just, you know, I was probably just watching you get ready for everything, knowing that I wasn't going to shoot a gun or shoot any ducks. And I was just more or less worried about how I was going to stay warm. Yeah. Um, versus this time, like we had a good plan of how I was going to stay warm and what we were going to do to kind of like set me up for success and have a good time out there. I think we bought your shotgun the day after you went on that that one hunt with me. I think so too. And I think it was with the intention that maybe one day I would go duck hunting yeah. and then it just never really came up again. Yeah, it <laughs> until did. This, it just happened. Yeah. Until, well, until this last weekend. What kind of gun do you have? Oh, I know it's a 20 gauge. <laughs> you don't know? I know it's an 870. Oh, so Remington 870. Remington, yeah. yes. Yeah. Pump action, right? Mm-hmm. How many times have you shot that gun? How many times have I shot that gun yeah. in total? Yeah. Including this weekend? Um, before the hunt. Man, just a handful of times. Yeah, Not maybe like a, a dozen. I think you've gone through a shell mm-hmm. or a box of shells. Mm-hmm. That probably sounds about right. Yeah, and that was like three years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. 
then how many times did you shoot? No, oh, let's not answer that question yet. Okay. We'll build the suspense. Okay. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what led you to, I didn't ask you to go hunting. Mm -mm. Talk me through that. Well, uh, I feel like we were just having a conversation on our way back from Grand Island a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about hunting and your podcast and how much hunting you're going to be doing this year. And I just thought to myself, you know what, maybe I should just try to go out one time and see what all the fuss is about. And I know I really liked deer hunting and I thought, well, maybe if I actually get to partake in it and be in a boat that has a motor on it, like maybe it won't be all that bad. So I asked you to go and you were pretty excited to take me. And so we kind of planned the whole week on us going out for a little bit. That kind of. How much, how much of a game changer was the boat? I mean, huge. I really, I, now that I saw the setup of those guys, I think I could have easily done something on land too. Oh, the guys you know that I mean? set yeah. up on the ramp? Yeah. Like, I, I think I would have liked that as well, but it was very cool to drive out on the boat in the. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to middle. that. Okay. <laughs> you, in the past, you frequently made fun of my quote unquote boats yeah. that I have. Well, because when I think of boats, this is probably very bougie of me, but bougie, and I don't have any yeah. reason to be bougie, but I think of the nice boats on the lake and the, you know, <laughs> the cruise liners. And so when I see your John boats with a trolling motor on the back and, you know, I believe things from um, Home Depot that I believe are the term, <laughs> I don't think you've ever used the term John boat. I think it was that those tinfoil pieces of crap. In your backyard. Yeah. And I think I used a different word than crap. You did. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, do you know why I don't like your John boat? Do you remember a couple of years when we took, took it out by Bo's land and the trolling motor stopped? Oh, we were going down the river? Yeah. And, and that was we, like our fifth date. I and that wasn't a couple of years ago. That was like, that was like okay, 11 was like years six, ago. Well, okay. No, it was <laughs> probably six or seven years ago. But what? No. The tro yes, yes, it was six or seven years ago. And the trolling motor stopped working because yeah. it wasn't charged correctly. And we had to drag up your John boat up this hill <laughs> and store it somewhere and then run to some sort of civilization because it was getting dark. I lost yeah. my phone out there. That's true. And we had to flag Bo down. Did we some... ever did we ever get your phone back? Yeah, we actually found it because we called it I had one percent left. I don't know how. That's right. It was one of those dinosaur phones oh that kept God. battery for a long time. That's right. That was uh we'd been what dating like maybe a year? Oh I don't and know. And it, it wasn't seven years ago. I've I, known you for ten. I know. I don't know exactly when it was. It was a long time ago. It was like ago. a decade ago. Anyways, we went we went floating down the river. Mm -hmm. We had a couple beers, right? Mm -hmm. And it was cold, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty cold. I don't know what we were doing out there, yeah. honestly. I don't either. But yeah, we went. I can't believe we both went down the river in that John boat. Mm -hmm. So that that's my first memory of the John boat. I think it's so I think it's okay to then. pull over and talk about that because you you hit it just in mention. We were probably doing like a five mile section. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, halfway through the trolling motor went out. Even though we were going downstream, yeah. we needed the trolling motor. Yeah. Um, and we ended up having to pull over. And this was before like any reliable maps, I think, on phones. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think we had God, that's weird to talk yeah. about. That's so weird to talk about. So we drug the boat up onto somebody's private property. Yeah, off. I have no we idea. We drug it up the, the bank and then we stashed all of our stuff. Yeah. It was um, just us on foot with your it, cell phone. Yeah, with my cell phone because you're with nowhere to be found. Yeah, and we weren't. We didn't drink that much. We weren't. No. This oh wasn't no, no, an no. That, no, thing. that that wasn't like that wasn't a hindrance. It was just us trying to go out and relax on the river. Yeah, and it turned into some like basically this fight for survival almost. <laughs> and we had to call Bo. Yeah, we had to call Bubba, and Bubba came and uh, picked Thank us God up. He found us though because. Like you, you couldn't drop a pin six yeah, or seven years ago, or at least we didn't know how I keep to. Saying six or seven, six or seven years ago, we lived in El, El Paso. Paso. Okay, so maybe this was yes, a long, long time ago. Anyways, yeah, we went, we got to a dirt road, and I told Bo, I was like, "Hey, I'm on a dirt road with whatever, like the mile marker, whatever." 
And he was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be there in a second. Like, I can't it remember. Looked, it looked like the, the beginning of a horror film. Like yeah, the sun was sure. almost completely down. Oh, and yeah. We I were think, racing out of the woods. Yeah. It was definitely dark when we left the woods. Well, it was, yeah, I think it was getting there. And it just, it looked like oh, the beginning of a horror yeah. movie. And okay. of course, Bo flagged us down with one headlight out. I do remember that. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Oh, Here's where shit. I die. Okay. Moving on. Mm-hmm. That was a good date. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you married me. Yeah. All right. So you said, okay, I better go figure out what this whole duck hunting thing's about. Mm-hmm. And me setting up this new boat with the 16, I, we have 16 foot, mm-hmm. 36 inch John boat with an electric trolling motor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I just don't want to take a 36 inch wide boat. With a, a regular motor on it, going like powerful, just going to put in places that where I can pretty sure. much walk. Mm-hmm. And I built a, a low profile blind on it. Mm-hmm. And you've been looking at that thing pretty enviously in the garage for the last like month. Yeah, because it's stolen my parking spot. <laughs> well, I can't leave it outside. Okay. I could. Yeah, you could. Easily. I probably will have to here shortly. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, let's talk. It's the evening before the hunt, and it's mm-hmm. time to cash in on, hey, I'll go hunting with you mm-hmm. on Saturday. Talk me through that. Well, I definitely almost backed out. And Did rem- you? Yeah, and I remember you asked me a few times, like, hey, we, we really don't have to go if, if you don't want to. But I just knew I was just, like, looking in your eyes, and you were just so sad. Because I think you thought I was going to say, like, hey, I think I'm probably just going right. to sleep. Because sleep is very, very important to me. It's true. It's very important to yeah. me. And I will skip a lot of things for sleep. So, yeah, for, that's for true. Sleep. so I really kind of had to talk myself up for it. And then I know Stefania and Brett had come down to to help watch Nadine. So I was like, okay, like they're here. It's going to be kind of crappy if I end up not going out. And they just, I mean, of course they got to spend time with Nadine and us, but I was like, no, I told Ben, you know, I have a long weekend. I can sleep on Sunday. So I said, okay. And I knew I had to go to bed early, and you still tried to have me stay up later. Sorry. But I knew I was like, I had I have to get at least seven hours of sleep. So I took it upon myself to go to bed early. Bam. It's wake up time. Your alarm's going off at 3 a.m. Oh, that was misery. I don't I don't think I've ever been up that early willingly. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? We missed something. Hmm. We did some drills. We did do some drills. Oh, yeah. I tried to talk about that earlier. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Well, we did some shotgun drills and shooting drills and just basically drills to prepare me to successfully shoot on Saturday. And I think they helped immensely. So Mm -hmm. we just started off with me sitting in the living room with my shotgun and basically you calling for birds and how to get ready and how to, you know, flip the trigger on the safety, the safety. Yeah. And then be able to pull and just got a couple of, of safety lessons from you about my gun because I haven't really touched in a couple of years. So it was nice to, it was nice to like load and reload my gun and kind of get that practice again. Um, and then we upgraded to the boat and I would sit in the boat and I would have my gun in my lap and just kind of, you know, try pulling it across since we need, we had that, whatever you want to call that, that brush or yeah, the brush brush across the boat. And I had to kind of, you know, find a way to shoot across that as well. And then you made me put on the waders and the extra stuff and my head, the headphones that your noise or the noise canceling headphones. Yep. So that was a ch- another challenge, but it was all, it was great practice because I did feel like I was very well I mean, as best prepared as I can be for my first time. Awesome. Okay. So 3 a.m. We wake up. Mm -hmm. Well, you woke up at 3.10. I did. I told you to leave me alone for 10 more minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But after I got up, I was ready. I was like, okay, I got a little extra sleep. I feel okay. Got ready. And you had everything laid out. You had coffee made already. Uh, Everything was good to go. I had packed a few last things. Um, yeah, and I, I, I was starting to get excited by the time we left. I was like, okay, I, I can do this. Okay, can- what time did I say we were going to leave? I think you said you wanted to leave the house by 4, 3.30? Yeah. Okay. We did not leave at 3.30. What time did we leave? I think we left at 4. 
three forty five, I think. Okay, three forty five. Yep, yep. And then uh, walk me through from walk me through that car ride, that truck ride. Well, um, I was first told I would have breakfast, and that was a lie. What did, breakfast did you say we were? What did I say we were going to have? Well, you, in the morning, that's when you told me that we would be having Casey's Pizza breakfast pizza yeah, at a the, gas station. The best duck hunting breakfast there I is. I thought I'd be having breakfast at home because I'm pretty hungry oh, when I wake up. Yeah, that was a that was a boohoo on your part. Okay. So anyways, we get, oh yeah, so we had to go to Austin's place to pick up the decoys. Yeah, I had to pick up my decoys. Yeah. And then I wanted to get my earplugs that we use for the MRI machine <laughs> so badly. And you said, okay, we have five minute wiggle room. So we went back and I was able to get my headphones or my my earplugs. And I forgot my earplugs yep. when we went out on the boat. Yep, you did. <laughs> yep. And then we... Start driving out there and we're talking about what to expect and uh, what's going to happen and, you know, kind of how to keep my calm out there. And then we get to the gas station and there's no pizza. There's no pizza. Yeah. So, yeah, the lady at the gas station had not started making breakfast yet. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. So I about that. That was... <laughs> I, I was able to redeem myself, but I was like, you got to be kidding me. So we just find some breakfast burritos that you're able to heat up. And then at the last moment, she pulled out some breakfast sandwich that was freshly made. So I was able to eat that. That was fine. That was pretty good. So that kind of helped out a lot. Had my coffee still. Uh, and then we drove up to this place. And I still, this is one thing about hunters I'll never understand. You guys just drive up to a gate and park your stuff and just start getting out. I mean, it has a little sign that says public hunting and that's about all you guys need to go past it. I mean, I would never, my wildest dreams drive up to a, a gate. And I was like, Oh, this looks, this looks great right here. Let's, let's go in. Well, I mean, so, I've been there before. I understand. I just think like I have no hobby in my life that, that entails me <laughs> driving out to very random places and be like, oh, this looks like a good spot to do yoga. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, that's true. Or bake some cookies, like. Oh, is that your thing? <laughs> well, I do, like to, I do like to bake cookies. Okay, so we get, um, we, we park, and then we start taking the boat out. What are your, what, walk me through your reactions and your thoughts. I just didn't realize how much prep work there was. I really, I was... You know, there was the boat and then there was the motor to the boat and then there was this whole thing of decoys and the walk down to the water was not that long. But when you, when you take into consideration all the stuff that you bring, you know, you kind of have to hustle because I know that we were running a little bit behind. So we're trying to get out there as fast as we can. And, you know, luckily there's no other cars in sight anywhere. So we know that they're like, we're not going to be fighting for a spot. But then there's just this whole issue of, you know, putting everything on warm socks, long johns, making sure you're layered up. Then the waders. Oh my gosh. That was just a small disaster. I didn't. I, what I can't believe is you tried on, I think three different sets of waders now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And your calves. Yeah. My calves were getting stuck on yeah. them. I don't feel like I have massive. Ca I think your calves uh, you are bigger than mine. I don't think my socks were properly placed. I think I was very like lazy putting them on because oh, the, okay. the second time after I took off the waders, you got and, some like, big calves. Though. Well, okay, yeah, but they shouldn't be to the point where I'm struggling to get waders on. You know what I mean? Right. Either way, once I adjusted my socks, like I just I was better about. I feel like somebody might socks. be like trying to picture. I know. You right yeah, now. I'm not like. They think you're like a big girl. Like a sh you know, sh I don't know. <laughs> what are you about to say? <laughs> I don't know. How much do you weigh? That's it. No. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> you are an athletic, athletically built girl yeah, that's like five edit. foot, what, six? Five foot five. five if foot you five. could edit that out, that'd be great. Oh, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you're, you're like five foot five, skinny, but athletic. Like, you're not, okay. I wouldn't call you like. Oh man, I'm like treading into yeah, some deep you water right now. Are not doing great right now. Um, I, how about I'll just take this from you? I I just once I got the sock thing figured out with the waders, 
It was fine. Yeah. They felt fine. You work out. I want to say <laughs> okay, that. Okay, yes. I, I work out on occasion. How about that? Sure. Okay. Can we move on <sighs> from that? Right yeah. Now. That was... <sighs> All right. Continue. You should probably know how much I weigh also. I was I was just not going to... I was trying to trick you into saying it on, oh, on, on okay. there. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not something most women are willing to admit freely on a, on a podcast, podcast scenario. So yeah, just, sure. just as a heads up for future female guests. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, some, I guess, may not care. Like Viola, I know she's never cared about sharing her weight. Continue. Anyways, so once I got that figured out, the waiters were actually pretty comfortable. Um, I was feeling pretty warm, so I was I was glad about that. I told I know I know I told you my one requirement before I went hunting to for it to be a successful trip is I have to be warm. Mm-hmm. I really didn't care about anything else. I feel like I could have been out there for hours if I if I am just warm. Yeah. And my primary concern was my feet. Because that I remember the last time we went out with deer hunting and when I was watching you duck hunt in El Paso, my feet got cold. And I don't know if it's just my feet because I had plenty of layers on, but I just, they they were a little chilly this, this afternoon or that, uh, that hunt. Yeah. Um, and then, so we dragged everything down there. And so I was in charge of the blind or yeah, the blind bags and the life jackets. And then you pretty much had to make a couple of trips to get the boat down there. And then the motor, I offered to, I offered to help with the battery, but I guess it was like 60 or 70 pounds and you just kind of laughed at me. So I, yeah, I, I don't think I could have gotten very far with that. Um, and finally we kind of started getting ready and we were, you know, you kind of put me in the boat and we put everything in there and we cast off. Is that the mm-hmm. right phrase? Uh, sure. We drifted yeah. off into the darkness and then, um, yeah. Did you like just, the ride out there? Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It was a clear night. So the stars were super bright. I think um, you told me you're like, I have never been up this early. Yeah. To, or like somewhere this dark. Yeah. I, I really can't remember the last time I saw stars out that bright. So that was really pretty and nice. I was, and I was starting to get to the point where I was like, okay, I can see why he might like to do this, especially with, you know, if he goes with a couple, two or three really close guy friends that he's, you know, been friends with for a long time and they have a good vibe out there and all like hunting. Like I can see why this is, this is, you know, something that he likes to do so often. So we drove around, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. And we finally got to our spot and he, like, I hope the next time I go with you, I can be of a little bit more assistance since I know I'm a little bit more hardy now. Yeah. Like I, I was worried about my attitude. I was worried about being cold. I was worried about just being a grump out there, but I wasn't. No. But next time I would definitely. You like, want to partake, like yeah, putting decoys I would, out. Yes. I would like to, I would like to be able to help. Cause I know you were more than willing to do all that stuff for me. Cause like, I know that your only goal was for me to have a good time. Yeah. And so I know that you like took it really upon yourself to make sure you were the one in the water, make sure you were the one that was getting everything ready yeah. make sure like checking up on me constantly, making sure I was, I was doing, doing well. The last time I was out there, we were in hunting in probably eight foot of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this time we were, I was up to my knees. Oh yeah. You were. You so were that was unexpected. I was not uh, expecting us to, um, so how how do you drop decoys if you can't like I would I was gonna, I would have you just thrown them out. The, oh, so I would have just boat. thrown them out there. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so that makes sense. Well, so that I guess that was going to be my one job, yeah, exactly. but you, it ended up being so shallow that you could throw them out yourself. Yeah, which is fine either way. But yeah, it would have been nice for me. Like I can't couldn't really help much with the boat. Like getting it down at least was kind of a one man job. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> couldn't lift the battery. Like it was too heavy for me. You know, the decoy bag was so huge and so awkward. Like I just had this like little, little shoulder to, you know, yeah. at least I could do like the blind bag and stuff. But I figured like getting myself down there was enough, enough help for you. So once we got everything set up, I think we timed it perfectly. I know you like to wait a little bit longer, but by the time we were about ready, we could, I could kind of start seeing the sun, sun yep. come up a little bit. So uh, it was exciting. I was excited. I was definitely like kind of buzzing a little bit and I was like, okay. Oh, before everything? Yeah. I was like, well, like ev- after we got everything settled down and you yeah, were when, in the boat too. When did you start like, okay, oh man, like here comes like. Well, I started hearing ducks. Mm-hmm. And so I was like. How do you, what does that sound like? I'm not going to make that sound. 
Oh, no, no, no. I mean, just describe. Are you like, what were you hearing? Well, I, I was hearing ducks Quack. quacking. Yeah. Quacking, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I heard a couple other sounds, I'm guessing bullfrogs or something like that. Yeah. It was, yeah. And that, I mean, I was convinced at some, some point that I was hearing duck calls. Maybe I was not right, but they sounded like we had like parties close by that were have that were doing duck calls. Or maybe those were just actual ducks. Yeah, those were just ducks. Okay, well, then the, the group were... that set up at like uh, like two minutes before shooting line, uh-huh. they didn't call at all. Oh, okay, so never mind. So those were all just ducks. Yeah. So then I kind of started getting excited, and then it was right before shooting light, but you started kind of pointing out that there were some ducks flying around. So I was like. Oh my gosh, we actually might get to see some ducks. Cause I was kind of worried because there's definitely some hunts you come down and you're like, I didn't see anything. I was like, oh, Duck really? Lady? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not this year, but I've always, I feel like there's been a very, like a very few times where you've just been like, oh, like we didn't see much. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, really with my hope. dad. Anytime my dad I know, hunts your with dad food. is just such bad luck with hunting. It always, no. it always has surprises. It's so sad. <laughs> I know. You guys always just come home. I mean, it's. <laughs> Yeah, I feel bad for you guys. My, when you, yeah. Every time it's you not, go hunting, I'm like, well, I guess I'll have a nice conversation or something yeah, out there. I shot, <laughs> like, I shot six ducks in like 20 minutes I, yeah. at the same spot. And then I take my dad there three days later with similar conditions. Nothing. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Either way, it's good for you guys to spend time together. Either way, um, what was he talking about? It's, uh, it's oh, about, close okay, to shooting about, light. About shooting light, yep. ducks. Yep. So, um a big a big question that I got answered is how does how can you spot a duck from so far away? And I think I finally like towards the end I can I I could definitely tell like a duck flying versus like a seagull. A seagull. Yeah, yeah, that was a big thing for me and I know that probably sounds stupid to people who hunt a lot but like I I wouldn't have known but I definitely like you could see like the seagulls and they had like their big wings, you know, whatever like this. And then you just see a duck to whoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of, like, Ducks speed across. Like, yeah. Faster flapping. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then we got to shooting light. <laughs> we heard a couple boom, boom, booms. Well, remember right before shooting light came, I saw I, that mallard came in and it like, yeah. can you want to describe that a little bit? Well, I mean, I didn't see it as well as you did. Obviously you saw a lot more ducks than I did. Cause I, I feel like I just had like one focused look sure. on where I thought the ducks should be. But I know you had a much like better idea of where they were going to come in from. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing the, the mallard and I just kind of remember it just kind of like swooping in a little bit and then kind of going back out. Yeah. And I do remember you asking me, asking me, you were like, do you think you could have shot that bird in the air? And I said, I would definitely try. Mm-hmm. Cause I think our goal was at first to have you call in a duck on the water and have me like try to steady a shot a little bit and then try to shoot. Sure. So I was kind of, I was kind of like, well, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of nervous. I also wasn't a hundred percent sure I was even going to shoot my shotgun. Like, yeah. I'll, you thought I'll, maybe we were going to get I'll stumped? be honest with you. No, I just thought I physically wouldn't oh. be able to. Like I like thought. You thought like game time. Yeah. You were going to be able like, to Like I thought it was going to chicken out. Didn't know that. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. Guns. I just, I did not, I did not grow up with guns at all. My first experience with the guns was with, was with you. And like when you started or not when you started hunting, but like when I started like being around you during hunting season and your, you know, your dad and you know, your friends and stuff like that. That was my mm-hmm. first introduction to guns. And so it was just, I don't know, it's still a little nerve wracking. And I mean, I did shoot that deer with the rifle, you know, eight years ago or whenever that was now, but I've kind of forgotten about that. And I had so much adrenaline at that point that I don't really remember a whole lot of that shot. You mm-hmm. know, I remember like the deer, I remember focusing on the deer. I remember you asking you like several times if I should shoot it. And I remember shooting it and then, but I really don't recall much, much of that, you know? So I wasn't really sure I was going to shoot my gun, but we had, you know, it got to shooting light and we had seen kind of a few ducks here and there. And then you said that there was a duck coming and I couldn't see it, but I got ready anyways. And I just saw one finally come in super, super low and it just kind of landed on the water and I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm not ready. It's too early for this. Like I thought I was going to get to see a few more ducks and, 
because I, I remember I talked to you. I said, I think I'm just going to watch you shoot a couple ducks first. I'm going to get a sense for it. But then I kind of got to think, I was like, what is, what is this? The only duck I see, like, what is this? The only one, like, I was like, I better do it now, you know? Cause I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what, what the rest of the day is going to bring. And so I got ready and the duck came in and just kind of sat on the water and started gliding in towards me. And then I was just like, you have to shoot this. And then I kind of heard you through it with the noise canceling headphones. Those are nice, by the way. Uh, I just remember you saying like, you can shoot it. Go like, take your shot. You can do it. I was like, shoot now. This is exactly what happened to the deer. Yeah. And you're like, yes, shoot now. I was like, shoot now. He said, yes, shoot the duck now. And I just remember, I just, I buried the, the shotgun in my shoulder and I shot it. And I just remember the, just huge noise, even though I had my noise canceling headphones on, I saw the flash and I just remember the, the duck just kind of doing one of these like maneuvers, like bat, bobbing back and forth. And I was like, no, it, di- you, you hit it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I knew I hit it. Cause if I didn't hit it, I'm assuming it would have flown away. Right. But I think it was still alive maybe. Yeah. And so then you were like, shoot it again, shoot it again. And I was so stunned. I like, I was so, I didn't even like pump my gun. I was so bewildered that, and so you ended up doing the mercy killing. Thank you. Mercy I, killing. Well, we call but, it finishing. Oh, okay. It's well, okay. you know what I meant. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like I didn't want the poor duck to just hang out there and be like, oh, why, why did this happen to me? But you know, I, I like, didn't have like, it's weird. Like my mind was like paralyzed for a second. I couldn't think, you know, I, yeah. I feel like I, I'm sure I was in, a little bit of shock almost, you know? I can't, I I can't imagine. Yeah. I, it was kind of a weird, a weird sensation. I really, I I don't know. And I remember you shooting it and killing it. And then I was like, did I shoot it? And you're like, you shot that duck. And you were the one that was like, if you didn't shoot that duck, he would be, he'd be gone. He'd fly away. Like there's no way he would have stuck around, you know? Yeah. I was like, so did I just kill my first duck? You're like, you just killed your first duck. I was like, oh my God. And I was just, Beyond like, I don't even think thrilled is the right word. I was just, I felt so, I felt proud of myself. I really did. Cause I was really psyching myself up about the gun. I was super nervous to shoot it. Like it had been so long since I had done, been hunting. You know, I feel like I'm just a different person than I was eight years ago when I killed the deer. And I, I don't know, for me, there was just a huge difference between the deer and the duck. And I just, I, I don't know, I had a very huge range of emotions going through my mind at that point. And so you got out of the boat and you went to go get the duck and you brought it to me and I held the duck and I had a little moment with the duck. And it was just very, it was so interesting and powerful to hold this duck. And it was. It what, was what was the first? Okay. As I'm walking up with the duck, what's your feeling? Well, first of all, I'm thinking, I was like, this duck is so cute. No, no, hold on. Back that up. Back it up. So, boom, shot your duck. You're like, oh my gosh, I just shot my first duck. I'm walking out there to pick it up. Walk me through your emotions all the way to the point where we laid him down on the front of the boat. I mean, I, I think by the time you still pick up the duck, I'm still so stunned about what happened. I, I, first of all, can't believe I shoot a duck that, that this early because it's still not even like legally sunlight. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like that 702, whatever. Yeah. It was, it was 30 minutes before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was still kind of like a little dark out, you know, and that the sun was just starting to come up and I was just like, I can't believe I, I already killed a duck. I was just amazed. And I finally, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, I, I get why Ben likes this, you know? And then I just... I had this huge range of emotions of like, I'm so proud that I did this. But then I was also like, oh, but I just killed this duck. I just, I feel bad. I feel like I'm not against hunting by any means. I fully support it. I support conservation, but it's, I think it's different me supporting you in the background and just kind of like getting little bits and pieces from you to me actually killing my first duck and realizing like, okay, this is what this is what hunting is about. And this is what I want to, I want to just pull over real quick. Yeah, has her snoring. If you guys hear a weird noise in the background, our dog. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Should I wake him up a little bit? Uh, Hester, he's fine. Hey buddy. Can you stop snoring? Hester. Okay. He stopped. All right. <laughs> he had a long walk today. <laughs> yeah, he did. All right. So I'm bringing you the duck back. Mm-hmm. 
walk me through like that. I almost didn't want to touch it just because I was nervous that I was going to cry. Mm-hmm. Because And I did. Mm-hmm. I, I slightly teared up a little bit. Yep, you did. I didn't full out cry like with the deer. Nope. But it was... It was still this sense of like, I took something away from this duck and I, I know I can't think that way. Like the, the way you described it to me about conservation, like nine out of 10 out of nine out of 10 ducks are going to not survive this year or something like that. Yeah. Or some some, some, some kind of number. I don't remember what it was, but like, it makes sense. Like, I'm taking this duck so I can provide food for my family versus this duck just either dying of some random disease or dying of weather conditions or whatever, and then just rotting away in the, in nature. So like for me, that was a huge understanding that I kind of, I saw a huge, um, something happen to you when you first felt the duck. I had never touched a duck. And Out of all those ducks, you never touched one. No, I have no reason to touch. I had no, I had no reason to touch any of those ducks that you brought home. Hmm. I just, it was not. I don't know. Just never once crossed my mind to go out there and touch one of those ducks. Okay, describe the, describe it. The duck was very warm, and like the, you know, the head was, the neck was all limp, and it, I just, I don't know. It was very. I just felt a weird connection to the duck. It sounds weird to say now that I'm not in the moment. No, I no. But I just I felt like a strange connection. I don't even know what the right word is to describe it. Like I didn't feel sorry, but I didn't feel like super like pumped up like yeah, I just killed a duck, you know. That's not how I felt at all. I just, I felt like a sense of accomplishment. And I just I felt like I understood the hunting world just a tiny bit more. And it's definitely something I would like to do again. Do you remember I'm, the name of the duck? I know it was a hen. Hen ringneck. Hen ringneck. Yes, yeah. because I, yes, hen ringneck. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it was just uh, it was just one of those things that I just, it kind of clicks with you. And you're just kind of like, okay, I I see why you do this. And I see that this is more more than just you going out with your buddies and hanging out. Like there, there's a huge spiritual purpose. Yeah, almost. definitely. Yeah. Can you see why it like recharges somebody? Like, oh yeah. To, you know, all week they're thinking about it, and then they go out there and they get it, mm-hmm. and then they come back and they feel fresh. Yeah, I felt. I mean, I was dead tired physically, but I felt. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I felt a little elated all day and I was just kind of, you know, I was very much at peace yesterday and I don't think necessarily it was, you know, a hundred percent the hunt, but it was just more of like this huge process that we went through and preparing and then to go out and actually do it and be successful because there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of things that you do in your life that you talk yourself up and you fail at, or you don't do as well as you're, as you'd like to do. So to have that be one of my first ducks that I see in front of me and be able to successfully shoot it and get it and then, you know, be able to harvest it later. That was a pretty, pretty powerful moment. Yeah. Okay. So we only had the babysitters till like nine o'clock, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we shot that duck and I think we were, I think we started picking up decoys at what? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Well, you started picking up decoys yep. at seven thirty. Yep. Yep. So we were literally out there. We only had an hour of shooting time. Mm-hmm. That we shot. So. Yeah, I we didn't see a whole lot. Did you uh, shoot any more than that? I shot at one duck and missed terribly. Oh yeah, the so teal. He flew away. Teal, yes, right? yeah. yeah. So he flew away. And you okay? Question. So you'd shot your your one duck. Uh huh. Now subsequent ducks. Were you like? Were you hungry for more? Were you like? Okay, I'm ready to do that again. I wouldn't say hungry, just because yeah. I don't think I'm as hardcore as you are in the hunting world at all. Like that, like hunting is not one of my passions. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I definitely was excited and I definitely was looking out for birds. And I was kind of, and you know, we got to the point where where we we didn't see ducks for like five minutes. I was like, oh man, I wish like one would just fly right here. You know, I was just, I was definitely excited. And if my gosh darn feet 
would have been warm mm-hmm. and we would have had the baby stirs for a while longer, I would have had no problem staying, staying out there out for, for uh, you know, at least another hour. Yeah, I got two fixes to that. I got those toe warmers. Yep. I bought mm-hmm. a hundred pack of those. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get you your own waders. We're going to get you neoprene waders too. Whatever that is. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, 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 I could have definitely been out there for a while longer. That's good. That's good. All right. So we start packing up. Mm-hmm. Um, walk me through getting back to the truck. Misery. Hold on. Start with the boat ride out. Okay. Well, the boat ride out was, was, was nice. It was nice to just. Wasn't it cool to go in the dark, not knowing like what anything looks like? Yeah. And then coming out and seeing what it looks like. Yeah. It was nice to kind of like coast back and. Yeah, it, it was just nice to see the water. The water was very, very um, silent. Like there, Still, there was yeah. no, yeah, there was no, there was no wind at all. It was just the sun was kind of starting to peek out a little bit. It was, it was nice to see. Um, and then we dro- drove back in, and I, I remember thinking to myself because you saw the group of guys that were kind of by us. And I remember I asked you when we were in the boat and we were in our spot. I was like, do you, do you see where these guys are set up? Like, I don't see them. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I can see them from here. I'm like, okay. And I did not see these guys until we were maybe like 10, 15 yards out. And I finally saw like their faces. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> they hid themselves so well. well that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they did exactly what they should have been doing, but I was just, I was so stunned. Well, cause first off, I was looking for a boat. Because I don't know why I thought since I'm in boat hunting, everyone's in boat hunting, surely, yeah. which is not the case. So if if we did something like that, I could see myself also like just a good hunting time off the shore. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now sure. I don't ever want to be what I never want to do, and I've seen you guys do this plenty of times. Is those layout blinds? I have no interest in laying down and then popping out out of God knows what and shooting at birds. I don't think that's ever going to be an interest of mine. In the I boat, think it's nice because we were both propped up and I was definitely more in like a sitting, like a seated position, yeah. but I, do you have two more hunts in you this year? You think? I mean, I, because I want to, I want to think season end um, or duck season like February. <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding me? Uh, um, you know this. Well, um, well du- oh, duck season ends January. Here's my issue with. With hunting seasons. I never know what you're able to hunt or what you're able to go get because I swear every weekend for like the last two months, you've been like, oh, well, this is teal season. This is, this is small bird season. This is big, big bird season. Like this is. I'm going to give you something this is <laughs> That is by wing. design. This is mallard season. Okay, stop. And I, every <laughs> single week I'm like, oh my God, well, he can't miss this this weekend because it's so-and-so season. So he better go out this time. And then the next weekend rolls around and it's some other bird that I've never heard of. And they're opening this weekend. And I Okay. Just, oh to be gosh. fair, to explain this, <laughs> I'm talking here. Here's why you think there's so many opening dates. You had the teal opener, mm-hmm. right? And then you have the Nebraska teal opener, which I went up for the Nebraska teal opener. Right. And then the Kansas teal opener. And, 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 then, I, and, I, have, and I have no problem with any of that stuff. But what, <laughs> what you make it seem is like you're going to die if you don't make one of these opening seasons. And then there's the zone, the, the early zone opener for Kansas because mm. there's two zones. And then there's our zone. And so that's why you're looking at four openers, right, mm-hmm. for, for big ducks. And then there's the Canada uh, goose opener. like, mm-hmm. And it is. It's nice to go out on the opener well, because there's always seems like that's like the – it's tradition. I, I understand. But like you you wrote this to me in a text the other day and you thanked me for how patient I've been so far this year because yeah. you're, you've already been a lot better than last year. I will give you that. Uh, but you said something like, just remember that this is my Super Bowl. And my retort to that was, well, the Super Bowl is only one day. It's one game. <laughs> And you 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 drag it out to four or five months. Like I don't get a pedicure every single week. If that's what it cost me to go hunting, mm. unencumbered, you can have a pedicure, <laughs> massage, whatever you wanted. So, anyways, back to hunting. Okay, yes. Uh, I if you have two hunts left in you this this year, the one hunt I want to take you on is small water. Yes. Yeah. With a layout blind. Okay. And then a goose hunt, like a field goose hunt or a field mallard hunt okay. in the A-frames. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are the ones I want to take you on. Sure. The, those are ones I think I can do. I think we did the hardest hunt just because, just purely because of getting out there. Public land, big water yes. is exactly what I would say is like the most 
sporty, like that yeah, edgiest, like definitely. And yeah. I can see that. Like I again, like I had didn't have to do much, thankfully, but I can see if like you brought your boys along. I know that all of you guys would have been, you know, busting your bus to get out there and you would have been out there way earlier than I could have been and stayed out there way longer than I could have. So like props to you guys for being able to do that. But, but yeah, if I mean, if it does last till February, I probably do have two more hunts in me somewhere. So we get uh, we get to the shore. Mm hmm. We get to the shore and I'm starting to think about timeline. I'm like, okay, we really got to get this boat up back to the truck. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to be of any help. And this is when I offer to carry the battery and you laugh at me. So I say, okay. So I grab the blind bags again and I grab the uh, life, life jackets and I haul up to the truck with all my stuff. So I start putting stuff away. You tell me to organize everything in the back of your truck. So I do that and you go get the battery. You bring it up. Like, okay, I'm going to go get the boat now. So I said, okay, so I'm getting ready. I've got everything ready in the truck. Truck bed is empty, free to put the uh, boat in. 10 minutes goes by, 15 minutes goes by. I'm like, okay, surely by now Ben is dead somewhere. <laughs> like this, this is where the horror truly begins. So I get my phone just to make sure I don't have to call 911 or whatever. And I like kind of look down the path. Because it only took us maybe five minutes to walk down there, mm -hmm. if if that. I mean, no, it was a couple maybe, minutes. Yeah, I think it was maybe, 200, 200 yards. Yeah, it, it was not long at all. No. And so I was like, okay, I have to go. I have to go find him. Well, so I meet you about halfway, and you are just dripping with sweat. <laughs> and you have just moved this massive pile of branches off to the side that was in your way. And you have the strap wrapped around your waist, and you are just like <laughs> hauling this thing. And Pretty this, sexy, right? You. Uh, I was more worried that you were going <laughs> to have some sort of heart issue because it was it sucked. I mean, it was a terrible thing to get up there. It was uphill. It was uphill. It the, went. Down, the boat went down. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah, I get. I get like slid down. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, but we should have known that should have been our clue that it was not going to be easy to get mm -hmm. back up there. Yeah. And I mean, the bottom of the boat is just like perfectly caved so it probably was yeah. easy to go downhill but to bring it up it was just oh my gosh it was terrible well so then i actually was able to help out with this point i won't lie yeah it was a lot easier pulling it up the hill when you were pushing behind yes exactly so, so i i got behind and i gave it my all and i started pushing and oh it still took us a while and there was there was a couple couple rough patches and getting up that those little that little step area oh yeah with the, oh. the very the very last part yes that was a little tough yeah. and you know i'm just glad neither one of us threw our backs out or had some sort of heart attack so that's i'm going to call it a win but f for next time and that's why i say i could probably potentially hunt out of a blind or something like that just as happily as a boat because we wouldn't have to deal with the boat yeah well i'm gonna i'm gonna call I'm going to call the, the sheriff and the COs like, there's no way we should be able to drive that extra mile down the road, uh, even though it says road closed, mm -hmm. to be able to put in at the regular spots because it's not even underwater. Yeah. Um, and it would be a 10 yard. <laughs> 10 yards is all it would. We'd have to drag that boat. Yeah. So that would have been nice. Yeah. However, that was not the case. And it was. Hey, what was your one job when we were when we put the, the boat in? Plug the boat. What did you what were you supposed to remind me of? I did remind you. Yeah. And you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so not my problem. Fortunately, it was only a, a couple. It was only a gallon or two. Yes. Well, because that's why my gun case got wet. I was yeah. thinking about that the other night. Yeah. Okay, so we get the boat up, we get it loaded. And we start heading home. Yeah. And it's a good drive home, and we just basically talked about the trip and talked about what what was what went well and what could have gone better. Uh, honestly, my only complaints were that my my feet and my toes were a little cold. Mm -hmm. um, uh, honestly, I really don't have a whole lot. Yeah. I mean... If a guy's listening to this and he's thinking, hey, it might be beneficial for me to take my wife hunting so that she lets me go hunting more or like, um, or she understands what, what, what's your, you know, okay, now you've got this kind of, there's a point in your life mm -hmm. where it was before you participated and mm -hmm. actively hunted. Mm -hmm. And then now there's afterwards. What 
are we going to be seeing different around the page house? Well, so, so first of all, I think if a guy or a spouse is trying to, you know, have their spouse come out with them and see what their hunting is all about, I, I think you're setting yourself up for failure if you think that that one trip is going to convince your spouse of why you like to go hunting. I, cause I think it could, it could go either way. Mm. And I wouldn't want someone to be listening to this and being like, Oh, if I bring my wife out just one time, she'll understand why I like hunting and she's going to let me go more. I don't think that's going to happen not at all. The healthy way to approach no, it. No, I don't think that's healthy at all. Yeah. And I think that could be actually even more detrimental because you may be setting yourself up for high expectations of going to go, getting to go out more and it may not go well. Right. And there are people out there that have not a care in the world to ever go hunting. You know, you need to bring someone out there that's open minded, that's willing to that is willing to at least give it a shot. If you bring out someone that's not even willing to go, but they just begrudgingly go just so you'll shut up, that's you're automatically. I was better. shocked when you told me you wanted to go hunting. With you know, me this I was a, I was a little shocked too, but I knew it was coming up. Uh, I knew it was not going to happen last year because we were so busy with Nadine. I was still, you know, heavily involved with her. I just, there was not a good time for us to both yeah. be out of the house for that long. And, you know, it was just, it was just still too early with, with us and Nadine. But I don't know, this year things have settled down a lot. I mean, I, for, for me, it was just time to see. And no, I don't think I'm going to let you go hunting more. I don't think that's the issue. I think I'm going to be more relaxed about it when you are mm-hmm. going to go. I think... I now know that if you say I'm getting out of the blind at nine, I know that means you're not going to be home until 11 or 1130. Because it takes a couple hours to pack everything up, to gather all your decoys, to potentially drag a boat 200 yards uphill and, you know, to pack everything up. I, I, I'm now going to be understanding of that. Whereas before I was like, oh, he's going to be out of the blind by nine. So surely he just has a half hour drive home. So he should be home by 930. Like, I didn't understand that other portion, you know, sure. I didn't understand how important it is to harvest your ducks right after you get home from hunting. Like, you don't want to just hang out in the, in the fridge or freezer for God knows how long. Like, you want to get that, you want to like culminate your trip and finishing it, finish it up and close the book. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to run 25 miles out of a marathon and then just be like, okay, well, I'll finish those two later. You know what I mean? Right. Or that 1.2 later, you know, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do now understand why you like this so much and I respect for you for doing it. But like I said, I don't think I'm going to say, Oh, here, you know, here's three More weekend. Time, yeah, definitely yeah, go yeah. out all three days. No, in a row, and but. Like that's, and I, I think that's really important to understand. Uh, Ramsey Russell from get ducks. I've told, I've talked to you about Ramsey before. Mm-hmm. He always said, uh, he always like one of his quotes Love is spelled T I M E. Mm. Um, and it's true. Like this is not going to get, I didn't go into this thinking like, Oh, it's going to get me more time, but I did want mm-hmm. it to be like, okay, Hey, cause how many days of the week do I go duck hunting? I mean, there's some weeks where you go more than others, but I mean, it's usually one day of the week, right? Yeah. But then you throw in your deer hunting and <laughs> it turns into a quite frequent thing. Sure. We're not talking about deer hunting. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that just to culminate this episode. Okay. But um, the whole time I was out there, I had to completely rewire how I think. When I go with Austin and I go with Alec and the boys, we're going out there and we're like getting after it. Mm-hmm. We want to beat people there. We want the best hunt possible. We want to be where the ducks are, mm-hmm. all this other stuff. And so that's usually – when I'm driving out, when I'm leaving, that's what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about that kind of stuff. Yep. But with you, it was like, <laughs> I'm like, I woke up at two. I had the boat loaded by two fifteen onto the, onto mm-hmm. the boat. Uh, I had, I drank a cup of coffee. Um, I'd gotten everything ready and I was like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, and then you kept taking forever, forever, <laughs> forever. And I don't know why when we leave for like a road trip, I know that we leave an hour after we said we were going to leave. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I thought hunting would be any different. Yeah, I don't know why you thought that either. <laughs> um, but I was like, nope. What's the goal today? Is the goal to, you know, get a limit of ducks? No, it's not. The goal is to make sure that you had as much fun as possible in the mm-hmm. outdoors to show you this thing. And so, like, every decision or every, like, 
um, decision point that like we had, I had to make a conscious effort, you know, effort to like, oh, this is the decision I would make. No, that's not mm-hmm. the decision I'm going to make. Yeah, and you you did a good job. We you were pulling out of the parking lot for the gas station when you said you wanted that. Um, man, I, I guess that I wish breakfast I, sandwich. That breakfast sandwich. And what did I do? Oh, you stopped the truck and ran right in. <laughs> Whereas if we we're on a road trip, we're like, nope, we're already late. Yep. Or nope, we don't do not have time for this. You have a perfectly good breakfast beer right there. Yep. No, but you and you said nothing. You, I I wasn't expecting you to do that, but you stopped the truck and you ran right in there. And within thirty seconds, I had my breakfast sandwich. But it was just little things like that. Like you were extremely considerate and. I am someone who does not go hunting and I am not someone who wakes up willingly at three o'clock in the morning and you let me sleep in for 10 more minutes, even though that probably hurt the schedule and you let me go back and get my earplugs, even though I still forgot them, you know, when we went out to Mm -hmm. the boat because that was going to make me feel better and you got me my breakfast sandwich and you made sure I was warm and you constantly were asking, like I, I... there were a very few moments where I saw like your, your face kind of pensive and I could tell like, okay, he's maybe getting a little annoyed, but you never like faltered. You just kind of kept <laughs> cool and steady. And I mean, it ended up just being it a was great so trip. hard. Cause I just, I, I kept having, to, you'd, you'd say something and I'd be like, no, can't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> like, why would we do that? We're going to be late. We're going to get that. We're not going to get the spot we want. The ducks, it's going to, we're only going to have 10 minutes to set up decoys. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, none of that actually matters. Right. Yeah. Uh, Because we're only, my my whole goal was, I said one duck. Yeah. One duck. That's all I needed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think if people who are listening on this podcast and who are considering bringing their spouse out, I think you kind of have to rewire your, your hunting expectations. Like don't bring your spouse along with a group of hardcore dudes or gals who are trying to shoot a limit and getting out there, you know, getting out to your spot spot at three or four a.m. Like, don't do that. If your sole purpose is truly to let your spouse have a glimpse of why you do what you do, it needs to be for them. You need to think of it how they're trying to, you know, how their how their experience is mm-hmm. going to be. And I think as long as you do that, you could potentially set yourself up for a really good, successful hunt, a fun hunt. And a hunt that maybe that they don't mind going back out again. And they can kind of look at it as like, a, okay, I do understand why this, why my spouse likes to mm-hmm. do this. I, I totally get it. And I'm not going to be as much of a nag, maybe just a little bit of a nag this time around. Well, I get to take a uh, post hunt nap more frequently now. Yes. And I have begged you to do this in the last years because... I mean, I got. I always three. catch hell for it when I take a nap. I wake no, up. No, 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 no. I, I have never once given you flack for that. I don't feel like I give you flack for trying to fight through a nap. Like, ha, like, have you not take one at all? And have you just be so dead tired that you're falling asleep on the couch or falling asleep on the floor? Like that. That to me doesn't make sense. If you want to take a nap, go to the bed and take a nap and wake up refreshed. Because we both did that. I was dead tired by noon or one and so when nadine went down to bed i'm like ben we're taking a nap we no took a three hour yeah. nap and i've and never you, felt so no, good and after you did oh. not fight it and you needed one because of your hunting the day before yeah I so was, I, was I, yeah my it was it was a much needed thing so which one's more annoying duck hunting or deer hunting Deer hunting because you don't seem to come home with anything oh, lately. It's not like duck hunting. I understand that you're not going to come home with a deer every single time, but oh no no okay no no. Deer hunting is definitely definitely worse, and here's why. I hear so many stories of so many deers and bucks that you see. When you're at, <laughs> oh, just deer. I, I think okay. so. Uh, I hear so many of your stories about how many big bucks you've seen and how many pretty fat does you've seen and you still don't shoot any of them. And that just like wildly pisses me off because I'm like, so you were gone for 12 hours. You're tired. I've got, I have gotten no time to myself. I need a break from the kiddo and just house life. And you didn't shoot any of those 15 things that you saw walking. My promise to you is that Two things tomorrow. Um, I'm either going to shoot the first fat doe that I see, mm-hmm. 
or I'm going to shoot the first buck Mm -hmm. whose antlers are outside of its ears. Okay. That's my promise to you. Okay. So we can kind of put this deer hunting to rest. Yes. And I, I, I want to save one tag though. Uh, you know, like in case, um, oh, hey, I, I don't have time to go duck hunting. I'm going to go deer hunting real quick. I'd like to be able to go deer hunting, you know, like. I know. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never claimed to be a great deer hunter. That is actually true. Yeah. How many times have, when we're, since, when everybody's measuring things at the table, since, what do I always say? Since I've met you. You have always freely admitted that you are not a great deer hunter. I'm a decent shot. You know, you are. I, I have. I mean, you I'm a, are. Yeah, I'm always practicing. Yeah. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if it's my decisions. And I, yeah. which one am I? Am I a worse deer hunter or a worse turkey hunter? You are a worse turkey hunter. The world's worst turkey hunter, you think? Do you think you could hunt turkeys better than me? At this rate, yes. Yeah. I, I think I think I could probably chase one down on foot at this point and get one before you could. Oh, you're probably not wrong. No offense. That's but all right. it's just I I don't know how many like big trips you went on or remember that Havelina hunt? Yeah. Oh jeez. I mean even worse Havelina hunter. Yeah, what a waste of money that was. Uh, so, yeah, so that that that's the other thing. Like at least with deer and duck hunting, you're not spending money to be like, okay, I'm going on this on this land. I like to be a self-made man when it comes to hunting. And I think that suits you way better. Yeah. So. Well, what do you want to leave the listeners of the foul front with? Like what's some of the things that you're like, okay, after this hunt now, these are some of the things that have changed. I've changed my mind on. I, I just, I, I do have a better understanding of the whole process. I will be more patient with you. Mm-hmm. With hunting, especially like when you when you're actually out and about, um, I 100 percent would go do it again. Um, I just I think I learned that I'm a little bit more hardy. Yeah, this year than I have been in the past. I think that if, I think if you would have taken me duck hunting a couple, of years, well, I know that when we went in El Paso, so it's not even that cold down there, that I was sleeping in the truck. I was, did not have a good time. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was kind of miserable for me. That was a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's okay. And I think part of that was definitely just because I wasn't able to shoot anything. Which it's is, different, right? Which is fine. Oh, yeah. you know what we missed? Hmm. Talk about shooting in, like, I don't want to say anger. Talk about shooting in, um, like, with adrenaline. adrenaline. Oh, yeah. I, I was so concerned that the shotgun was like going to bruise my face and bruise my shoulder. And I, I, it, I was going to have this like huge, massive, like hit to my, cause it was really like, body. I remember you were, you were pretty sore and hurting and not feeling great. When we the went first, shooting in El Paso. Yeah. yeah. yeah because I, I mean, I guess I wasn't shooting truly any, I mean, I was shooting at clay rock, but I mean, I, I, I don't even, I don't even remember feeling the shotgun Yeah, when it, when I shot it, I yeah. just, I felt like I had such control over it. Like I had, I felt like I had shot that gun a thousand times before. I felt like I knew exactly what to do. I just, it had, I was, it was so nicely tucked into my shoulder and like not even the uh, noise canceling headphones bothered me, which I was worried about at first because they're pretty big. Mm -hmm. I just, I, yeah. And I, I have no soreness whatsoever. I was, I'm, I'm very surprised, but yeah, I guess that adrenaline does kind of take over. Um, in that moment, cause I, it was really, I just, I knew exactly what to do and yeah. So if, uh, just you got to give a guy that's going to take his wife out next weekend, three pieces of advice, go make sure she's warm. Most specifically your toes, M- most specifically your, your feet. Um, if you are planning on having her shoot, make sure she's comfortable with the shotgun through drills and through, stuff. Through, through drills. Th- those drills helped immensely. Just physically holding the gun. Do you, can you walk through some of those drills really quickly? Well, so so one of the ones that we did in the boat. Well, mm-hmm. okay. So we, we just did the ones in the living room. Those yeah. were helpful enough. But I would just sit, you know, on, on the ground. I would have the gun across my lap. And you would be behind me. And you would say, okay, the, the target is going to be the top of the door frame. Mm-hmm. And so you would uh, stay say, you know, ducks, ducks, ducks. They're coming in. They're coming in. And I would raise up my gun and you would say, take him. And I would flip the trigger off. Of course, gun is totally empty. Yeah. And, you know, not I wouldn't pull the trigger, but I would just 
try to, you yep. know, play my shot there. Like, okay. We're aiming at the clock or Hey, yeah. you're going to aim at the little pumpkin yeah. uh, that's on the shelf. So then you're once you're, the, yeah. right. So once you're good at that, I would heavily suggest upgrading to, um, the attire you're going to have her hunt in. Mm-hmm. So waiters and if she's going to have any hearing protection and a big coat like that was a huge game changer making the actual Ma- uh, yeah making it conditions as, yeah exactly because that that was how i i think i would have been miserable trying to go from me practicing in the living room mm-hmm. shooting at a pumpkin through the brush th- yeah versus the brush and with everything on and we did some movement up. drills too didn't we mm-hmm. where like um I like oh, held yeah, my fist yeah, out right, and I made right. you, you follow. Fist, yep. Yep. So, so basically I made you like trace things with your gun. Right. So like that trace was the TV. Helpful. Now trace the family sign, the that, circle, yeah. the clock. So that was helpful. Um, I, and I guess my last piece of advice, don't ask her to do anything that she's uncomfortable to do. Yeah. I mean, if she's like really struggling with a shot, like, and uh, just to tell a, tell a tale on that, be encouraging. You know, because I easily could have whiffed that first shot. And mm-hmm. I think if I, I think if I would have whiffed that shot, I would have had such anxiety about like getting the next duck and like being so upset with myself and, you know, worrying that you are upset with me and all this kind of stuff. Be encouraging, be sweet, like don't give her any reason to, to make her upset. hate this, yeah. this sport that you are so in love with Ooh, Yeah, because that's going to cause a ton more friction Mm-hmm. And if, if she associates yeah. negative, yeah. and if there's already friction in that area, I mean, you just you can maybe kiss your hunting season goodbye <laughs> it's, if it ends up being that bad of an, of an experience. But there's plenty of potential to have a great, great time out with your spouse. Like we got to spend time together, which was awesome. We do not get to spend a lot of time. It was time together. weird seeing. It was weird. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was weird to see you in your environment. It was weird to see myself in this environment. But it was also yeah. nice to spend time with each other. Yeah. Right? We so rarely spend time without Nadine or without yeah, friends yeah. around us or without coworkers and stuff like that. So it was nice to just, it, it was nice. So yeah. So maybe tip number four, just go you and your spouse Yeah. versus you and your spouse and, and a, a buddy. bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. Or something like that. Because everyone's expectations are going to be different. Yeah. And I don't think if you, if yours don't align with your spouse completely, I think, I think things may go kind of rough. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go get ready for this deer hunt tomorrow. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. That's it. I I feel like the send off for the Foul Front Waterfowl podcast is always like an awkward one. What should I come up with my send off like? And that's the rest of the story. You know, that kind of thing. No, please don't say anything. I'm not going to say that, of course. Okay. Um, I don't know. You could just say, okay, well, you know, thanks for, ha- thanks for have. See, wait. it's hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Hope you had a good time. We've, you know, we've enjoyed having you or I've enjoyed having you. And until next time, I'm Ben Page with Foulfront. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. All right. Don't so just like <laughs> send off. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Communication 101. Yeah. You think I've. I think this is like episode 98 or something. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Yeah. So What's it like being off? married to the third or fourth biggest waterfowl podcaster? Well, I guess I don't really <laughs> care much. <laughs> I, it's it's very cool. I mean, it's cool. It's it's definitely eye-opening that you have this podcast and, and it's you know done fairly well and that you're still doing it a year and a half after you started this. Almost two years. Almost two years, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you started right before, yeah, a little bit before Nadine was born. Yeah. That's right. Is it annoying? Um, it it can be just because coupled with how busy you are at work, and then you come home and you have to do stuff with the podcast, and then you have to get ready for hunting. I feel like it takes a lot of time from you. Like, it just... A lot of sleep time, though. I don't well, sacrifice most... I know, I know, and, and and you don't, but at the same time, like, I, I, I truly, it's my, it's my opinion that you need more sleep. I don't think, I don't think anyone can argue that with me. And I mean, your your work schedule is incredibly demanding, and it it really hinders like our family life and what I'm able to do with my career, and it's just it gets to be a lot. So I think 
I think you coming home from a 14 hour day and still feeling this need to record a podcast, you know, or 14 hour day, that'd be a short day. Well, yeah, that's a short day sometimes. And I think that's very sad. I don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sorry. Okay. That that's a, yep. that's another podcast. <laughs> that's not a podcast. That's I've worked thing. one 14 hour day in my life. And by the end of it, I pretty much wanted to jump off a bridge. So I <laughs> s- don't know how you do it. <laughs> All right, folks. That's my wife, Natalia Page with uh, her first duck hunting experience and i think it was a good one a successful one yes yeah, certified Had a lot of fun. Duck, Cer- duck hunter certified <laughs> uh qualified licensed yes good to go yep all right it's awesome time well i will see you guys on thursday i promise um oh no friday you'll friday. be listening to it on friday okay. uh where we'll be doing uh we'll be back to the countdown and uh, the regular programming. Hopefully I'll have a big buck down or something down. Yeah, let's hope. (laughs) All right. Stay safe out there. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Fowl Front Waterfowl Podcast. Please come join us on our Facebook group, the Fowl Front Waterfowl Podcast group, where you can connect with a good group of hunters because we're all in this together. We need to act like it so that hopefully our great, great grandkids We'll be hunting ducks over our favorite public lands. Uh, We also ask that you go ahead and give us a written review on iTunes and give us five stars if you think we deserve it. And we really do want to hear back from you uh, so that we can give you the best possible content. And if you get in on that Facebook group, you can get in there and you can ask questions and you can tell us what you want to hear next or you can tell us uh, what you don't like and we'll be sure to tailor things to our listeners so all right stay safe out there and we will see you next week